So I was on Harbor Freight's website the other day looking at portable bandsaws, and I obviously saw the Bauer that I knew they had for sure. But in searching for that, I also found a Hercules bandsaw stand, and it does vertical or horizontal cuts. So I went out the next morning. I woke up at about 8.30, which is unheard of for me. I wanted to get there as soon as possible to buy this thing. Um, when I got there, I couldn't find it anywhere out on the shelves or um, out in the middle or anything. So I asked an employee, and he said, yeah, I think we got one in the back. So he went back there and got one, and I got a Bauer bandsaw as well, and he brought them both out. I was surprised. I think there was only one, apparently, because as soon as I got home, I just, out of curiosity, I checked the stock, and it was out of stock already. So that must have been the only one they got, and I'm just, I'm glad I got there early to pick it up. So anyway, this is not really a review or anything like that, because I haven't really used it much, except to cut a little bit of acrylic plexiglass, but it was actually kind of a challenge to put together. Um, once I figured it out, obviously it wasn't too bad, but the instructions aren't stellar, and it makes me wonder if this bandsaw stand was actually more so designed for the Hercules bandsaw that hasn't been released yet. It's not out in stores. It's, you can't buy it yet as far as I know. So the Bauer is really the only one you can buy unless you want to spend a lot of money on a Milwaukee or a DeWalt, which it's also compatible with supposedly. But there were just a few things that made the assembly just a little bit more difficult than I would have liked, but it wasn't too bad at all. This vertical plate that they include for cutting things in the vertical position, like a vertical bandsaw, it's pretty thick. It's about a quarter inch thick, almost a quarter inch thick. And I was kind of impressed by that. I didn't expect it to be that thick. The one that comes on the red, the big red version that Harbor Freight sells, the stationary model, it's a lot thinner and it works just fine also. But it's definitely not a quarter inch thick. It's more like 16th or maybe an eighth but definitely not a quarter inch so these next parts I'm opening up are the top mounting plates that connect the top part where the handle on your portable bandsaw would be to the top part of near the handle of this bandsaw stand and they actually have separate ones for the individual models you have this is for the Bauer there's one for DeWalt and Milwaukee, and then also one for the Hercules. This is the installation of that mounting bracket that I was just talking about. You have to take the handle off, the portable bandsaw here. And then the mounting bracket just bolts on to some existing bolt holes. And then you just use the bolts that were in there to secure the mount on there. I found the best way to get the saw in there was to go backwards with the mounting bracket off the saw and then put the mounting bracket back in once you get the saw inside the stand and then attach the bolts for the mount to the stand. Keep them loose though so you can adjust it as you go along. This gas strut connection mechanism is actually pretty clever and works really well for removing it or putting it back on. It just kind of clips into place when you need it or you take it off and use it as a vertical saw and you can just unclip it and it just folds down into place. So this switch mechanism was one of the trickier aspects of this assembly. It wasn't terrible but you have to have everything lined up and screwed in um, in the correct position before you install the switch, or at least that's what worked best for me. So you kind of slide it under there, under these, those circular slots there, those holes. You get the threaded part underneath those holes, screw that in, and you got to kind of get the other part into the on position, behind the on position, if that makes sense. And once you get it in there, it actually works really well and it's pretty safe. 
This is the slot where you'd put a clamp. I'm surprised they didn't include a clamp, but also I'm kind of glad because the clamp that they recommend using is actually really nice and it was only 10 bucks, so that's no big deal. I actually bought two of them. They're the Pittsburgh 9 inch drill press locking clamps. They have a threaded rod there that you just unscrew and then you put that in the slot of a drill press or in this case the bandsaw stand. And the good thing is you don't actually have to tighten them very much. You can just hand tighten them at the bottom there and they hold in place from the pressure that you're applying with the, the vice part of it. And of course they're adjustable so you can make them whatever height you need. So after I got everything adjusted and everything I did a few test cuts. This is just a test cut in acrylic to see how well that would do. And as you might expect it just cut through it like butter but I wanted to see how square it was and as it turns out I got it pretty square. One thing to notice here on this cut I had to take the blade guard off and I didn't necessarily see that in the instructions, maybe I missed it, but that's something you really need to do to make sure everything fits into place. Otherwise, it'll rub up against the edge of that, uh, that stand there. Here's this off switch, on off switch. That's actually one thing I really like about it. It's really simple. Once you get it dialed in, though, it's kind of tricky to get it dialed in. But like I said, after I took that edge guard off, that blade guard off, it made things a lot simpler in terms of aligning everything and making sure it was straight and everything fit together. This is the process for putting it into vertical mode. You just detach that gas strut connector and then you attach the base plate here with the bolts that you used with the blade guard. This is how the manual recommends you use it in its vertical orientation. There's two bolt holes at the bottom there for you to screw it into your workbench. And then you, I guess you're just supposed to let the other part hang off there. I don't really prefer it that way, but I just kind of wanted to see what it looked like. I think using it the other way is just fine. It's a little less space saving, but if you're using it in the horizontal position anyway, I don't see a reason to have it hanging here like this so your knee can hit it or something. It just seems inconvenient and annoying. On the other hand though, if you took that bottom part off, the horizontal position base plate, if you took that off and you just screwed the vertical part into your desk, I think that could work for sure. So here she is in all her glory. I definitely recommend this for a hundred bucks. I already have the larger red version that Harbor Freight sells, the stationary model, but really this being portable and so much smaller and not as heavy, I kind of like having it in my upstairs workshop. I have several workshops throughout my house, but um, my upstairs workshop is the one I do most of my work in, electronics and machining and everything. So it'll definitely come in handy for any of my upstairs projects. I don't aim to be a review channel or an assembly channel or anything like that. It just happened to be that this was a new product that didn't have any videos out there already, so I thought I'd make one. And most of my other videos are me making things or things that I've made. So you might want to check those out. And as always, subscribe and turn on notifications to see my latest videos. Thanks for watching.